There are two paths in front of you. One of them contains spoilers for all episodes of Life is Strange. The other is clear. What do you do? Welcome to the Black World Podcast, where we love Life is Strange more than Steph loves Dungeons and Dragons. I'm Sean, and I'm here with Jamie. Hello. Joey. Hey, who? Aaron. Hello. And Zach. Hello. And today we're very lucky to have the wonderful Katie Bentz with us, the voice of Steph. Hi. How are you doing today? Hi, Katie. Good, good. I'm super, super excited to be on this podcast. I'm, I'm really happy about this. So thank you guys for having me. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for cool. being here. It's, uh, we were really, really excited too. We've been talking about it all week. <laughs> brimming, brimming with excitement. What better time than now? Yeah, yeah we're, all, we're all big fans of Steph. I, don't, I think everybody who's playing Before the Storm is a big fan of Steph. But yeah. Yeah, she's a she's a pretty badass chick, and I am just so <laughs> yeah. I just I I am so excited and honored to be voicing her, and so happy to see all the responses that everyone has been giving. And and yeah, she's she's a super relatable character, and I don't see how anybody can't find something you know to love about her. So yeah. Yeah, really. Um, I won't go so far as to say if you don't like stuff. Uh, <laughs> unsubscribe but, I, but <laughs> it's tempting but if you don't I, like her get out yeah. <laughs> well, Steph, I mean, that's not what we're saying but sort of implicit <laughs> I thought I think I saw like I'm really you know when as an actor you know you're you're bound to hear negative feedback right and so that's always been in my mind okay like you know but honestly like with this like I'm not I've seen one negative post and, and negative meaning she wasn't my favorite character. And that was it. And I was, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, how many people love this character? So, yeah. So, as far as I know, there's just one person out there that she's not his favorite character. So, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone's entitled to their own opinions, even if they're wrong. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, here at the Steph Fan Club. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, Katie. Who, who are you? Yeah, um, I am, I was born in this little place in Washington, Eastern Washington State. You have to say Washington State or else everyone just thinks I'm from Washington, D.C., which is not where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Um, so Washington State from the Tri-Cities, Kennewick, Washington, um, that is where I'm from. And, uh, just like a little... Little town, desert, super fun. Um, and then I, um, yeah, I went to school in Bellingham, Washington, uh, which is near Seattle, and studied theater there, which was awesome. And I always knew that I was going to move out to Los Angeles to try and pursue my career. And um, it was, I moved out here a year, over a year ago. And it was just this crazy move to, I, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, but just being here, being here within this, this first year has just been the most amazing thing. I jumped on um, Life is Strange um, back in, I want to say around like February. And so that, I mean, that came, I, I came upon this gig, I mean, right when I came here. So it was just so amazing to, to have this. Um, be a huge part of my first year of, of Los Angeles, but um, yeah. But aside from acting and all that, I mean, I'm a I'm a really weird, goofy person. Um, I make YouTube videos. Uh, I'm just I, I I'm just yeah. I'm just myself, <laughs> and I have a lot of fun being who I am. Um, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I uh, it's pretty it's pretty sweet that uh. I don't know. It seems almost almost uh, serendipitous that upon moving to LA, you found life is strange. 
Yeah, no, it, it's just, it's been crazy. It honestly has been crazy. I mean, this, and this game, I, I never, I've never, I never played it before. It was something that I got found out and, and fell in love with after, you know, being cast in it and all of that, after actually realizing what I had been cast in. Um, Cause I didn't know that I was cast in Life is Strange um, when I was cast in this game. Um, so it's just been something that I would never expected to just blow up and just be so amazing for, for my career really. And, um, so it's just been a joy. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I love it. Good deal. Awesome. Alrighty. Um, should we get on to the questions? Uh, let's roll for it. Yeah. That's a 20. Nice friend. <laughs> um, the first question we have for you is what interested you into becoming an actress yeah so I um I always was different I think and I think it takes I think it takes different people to be in in this industry to be in any kind of artistic you know industry I think it takes different people to to do that and growing up, I, I was that. Um, I didn't really, you know, I was I was weird. I was goofy. I didn't really fit in with a lot of um, what you would say, like the normal crowd would be. And um, I remember I I was in the I was on the dance team my freshman year of high school, and um, super into it. I really loved it. I loved dancing. I think I might have not have been the best dancer, you know, <laughs> like looking back <laughs> at it now, I don't think I was the best, but I loved it. Um, and it was just not my, it just wasn't my home. And the people that were a part of it weren't the best people, you know, to, 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 to situate myself around. And that I, I ended up stopping, like I ended up leaving the dance team halfway through my freshman year. And then I came upon drama club and that just opened my eyes, like legit, it just opened my eyes to this world of freedom and, and self-expression and acceptance. And it was honestly like, one of the greatest things that could happen to me. And I remember auditioning for um, for the play You Can't Take It With You, which is like an old classic um, play. And I auditioned for it and I didn't get it. And I was super bummed out, but I was like, you know what, it's cool, whatever, you know? And I remember the my, my drama teacher asked me if I wanted to do student directing for it. And I said, yeah, of course. And it was six days before the play opened and the lead character in the play who played grandpa. Um, how, I think it's so funny how like there's these like 14 year olds playing like grandpas and stuff. I think it's hilarious. Um, but so he, he was grandpa and six, six days before opening night, he gets suspended from school for like setting off smoke bombs in the bathroom. Or something like that. Oh man. So, yeah. And so he's gone, he's suspended. He can't be in the play. And I just remember the director turning to me and saying, Katie, like go get into costume. You're going to be grandma. And I'm like, wait, excuse me, what? <laughs> and so, yeah, it, that was kind of like my first like taste test in it all was being thrown into it. So I had to learn all these lines in, you know, six days and I performed it and I, I, I did it, you know? And so that was like my first big, my first big dip into it. And ever since then I've, I've loved it and I've, I've gained, you know, Gained, I've grown from that and from there, you know, studied it at, at college and then knew that knew that I was not a triple threat and knew that my best place would be L.A. and trying to go in the film um, section of it. So, yeah, that's kind of my coming of a coming of an actress story. <laughs> have you uh, have you played any role in The Tempest? No, I have not. I'm actually currently in my first Shakespearean play ever right now as we speak. That's why I was uh. like, hey, you got to do it earlier because I have a show tonight. Um, yeah, I'm in the show Twelfth Night up here oh, cool. in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, so it's been really fun. But that was probably that was probably my favorite part of the episode too, honestly, was being able to actually like, and I'm not... Not trying to brag or anything, but I got all the lines right in the Tempest. So um, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, when you happy. played through. Yes, yeah, so when I played through, I got all the lines right, and I didn't cheat. I actually got all the lines right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. impressive. 
I had to uh, write them down. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, is it? Am I up next, or are we starting from the top? Yeah, it's you. Okay. Uh, All right, our next question is, how did you get involved with Before the Storm? So I did a little thing called self-submitting, and I self-submitted myself to um, this game, and it was the the name of the game was Almeida, and that's what I submitted myself for, and um, on this uh, breakdown service called LA Casting, and then I got an audition, and I got an audition for um, the role Samantha, which is Samantha in the game, and um, mm. I remember. Uh, going in there, and I had to read the lines for sitting there on the um, in front of the tree, talking about who's afraid of Virginia Woolf. Um, and I remember reading the lines, and I was like, "This is not going well. <laughs> like, this is not going well." <laughs> so it's awesome to like actually listen to um, Haley do her actual lines, who who voices Samantha. Um, she's perfect at it. Like she she grasped that character perfectly. And I just remember I, when I read for it, I just I didn't. And then I get a call back, um, and yeah, they wanted me, they wanted me to do Steph, and so I read for Steph, and and that's kind of that's where that all came from, and I, it's perfect because I think, yeah, I I, just, I love the character, and um, or, yeah, so that's kind of where where I got involved with it, it was just self submitting myself, and yeah. That's cool. Uh. Oh, I was going to ask a question, but I'm pretty sure we're asking that same question later. So I won't do that right now. So since you um, acted on screen before, um, was it a big change um, of recording lines in inside a booth? Um, yeah, I mean, it was. it's completely different. It's completely different. It's you and the voice director. Um, and so, yeah, I, I've never – this is my first – voiceover gig that I've I've got and um they put you up in the the studio room which is so cool like I I just remember going there for my first session and thinking that I was I was literally in a recording studio and it was awesome like you're in this room and it's so soundproof that you can't hear anything and you're just in your own head and um it, it was it was legit and yeah so they yeah they set it up they show you all of your lines and you just like go down the line da-da-da-da-da. You don't have any, you don't have your counterparts like you see in the game, like, you know, with, with Mikey and Steph and Chloe talking together. You don't have that. You're just saying your lines mm. one after another. And um, the voice director uh, in this case was Phil, and he um, did such an amazing job. Um, he tells you, you know, do two different takes, A and a B, um, and you just try to do it a little bit differently to give him something to work with. And then from there on, he'll he'll talk with you and, and tell you, okay, this is how you should do it you know, differently or whatever. And it's, it's just so cool. He doesn't just say, he doesn't just say your stereotypical, like director notes, like, right. I don't know, like better or like, I don't know, something like that. You know what I mean? Um, he actually gets what he wants out of you. And I remember there was multiple times where he explained what he needed and I did it. And he was like, perfect. I was like, how did you do that? Like he's so good, and I mean, he he was the voice director for the original, like the 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 first season. I mean, he's great. Um, so yeah, he did an amazing job, and um, it's actually fun, and it's so fast too. It goes so quickly. Even I mean, being in there for three hours, it still still goes by pretty quickly, and um, yeah, they're all really good. So yeah. Right. That's cool. Well, there are so many lines to go through, like even you know for oh stuff and like that the, the oh. game, like there's got to be so many different variations. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean it is because, yeah, it's like um, for the D and D game, you know, you have all the different options. So I mean, and especially because in the very beginning you get to choose what your name is. You know, mm-hmm. so you have between Chloe, Barb, and Calamasia, and it's like you know, so Mikey and myself. Or Mike, Mikey and Steph, you know, they have to say those different lines with the different name variations as well. So, like, that's all in there, too. So, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's just so – I mean, what a hard game to, to, to put together. A lot of detail, a lot of attention to it. It's just so cool. It's such a cool game. I love it. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. I would 
definitely love to do more voiceover work for sure. Um, I would love that. Um, so we'll see where that goes. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully you do. I mean, you did, you did a great job with stuff. Yeah. So mm, I, think, thank uh, you. I think it would be, it would be kind of remiss for other people to not utilize, utilize your talent. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, so do you have any good stories from your time working on the game? Um, well, just being, like I was saying, just being in there with the guys and, and it was just a really fun experience. It was very comfortable. Um, we joked a lot back and forth to each other. Like I felt like, I felt like I was accepted in there. I didn't feel like I was being judged. I felt comfortable being who I was. Um, Mm -hmm. and so that was really fun. Um, but I think just like, I think the realize, I think it was the realization, like this is my favorite part about working on this game was actually the realization of what game I was working on. Um, I, yeah, because it's, it's, it's a thing that they, you know, when you're working with video games, they don't usually tell you what you're working on because, you know, spoilers are a thing and, and all that stuff. And so they just try to keep it on the DL, um, for the game's sake, which I totally understand and it makes sense. Um, but yeah, I just remember, um, telling one of my friends who's a big gamer, one of my friends from home, and she just freaked out. And at that time, <laughs> I just, I didn't know because I hadn't played the game prior. Um, I would heard of it. Like, I've heard of that name floating around. But she just, I remember just her freaking out when she knew that that was in this game. And um, she's like, Katie, this is big. This is, a, this is a big thing. And I was like, really? She's like, yeah, this is huge. I was like, okay, let's do it. I'm ready for it. And... Um, yeah, it's 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 just been it's just been really fun and um just I just would never have expected um the response I've got from from being in it. So it's just yeah, it's been fun. Awesome. I'm glad I'm glad you've had a good time with it. Glad it's been a positive experience. Yeah. Well, um, so you kind of touched on this one already, uh, telling that story with you and your friend. Um, so did you know anything about Life is Strange before you got the part? Um, and, you know, what, what was it just like kind of hearsay or had you played the game? Yeah, so I didn't know. I did not know anything about Life is Strange before I received that part. And like I said, when I received the part, I didn't know it was for Life is Strange. It was for <laughs> right. random people. Like, what's Almeida? What is this? Like, what is, okay, let's do it, you know? I, you know, as an actor, especially as an actor coming out within your first year, you, you just take anything you get. And I was like, this is amazing. I'm excited. I'm going to be in a video game. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea the, the weight of the game that I was in. Um, so yeah. But that's kind of cool though. Like, I like that you bring a fresh perspective to it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, exactly. It's, it's completely fresh. I had no idea. And, and yeah, and I'm not sure, I'm not sure if, um, if Rihanna and, um, Kylie and I'm not sure if they had heard of the game either prior. Um, I don't know what their experience was with that, but I think that a lot of like the new characters, I, I, yeah, we didn't know. So, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it was interesting, but it was, it was cool. It was, it was a good realization for sure. And I'm de- yeah. I'm definitely like I'm I'm on the train. I'm on that train. I love it. I'm I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, a fan. Like, okay. like seriously, the fandom for Life is Strange is the best thing I've ever walked into. It's amazing. Yeah. The, yeah. That was one thing I was going to ask earlier when I said that we had a question coming up. Um, there's like uh, I wonder. I just want to know what it was like to like. You know, obviously you didn't know it was a game or, or even if it was Life is – or, well, you knew it was a game, but you didn't know it was a Life is Strange. But whenever you found out that it was, like, Life is Strange, I'm guessing you went and you researched it yourself. But is it, like oh, – is it, like, shocking to, like, find out that you're working on something that is, like, a sequel and already, like, has this giant established fan base? Well, I'm um, – yeah, I mean, it was – it's cool because you know that you're, 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 gum, you're going to be like, you're jumping into something that already has so much support. So, you know, it's going to be a fun ride. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, yeah. 
I yeah, like, I definitely did all the research. I was like, holy moly, this game like is this is it? This is you know this is a big thing. And the fact that you know they were doing a prequel sequel, everybody is freaking out about it. So everyone's gonna be on board with it. And um, yeah, I mean it's it is fun, obviously, creating something new that no one's seen before or heard before. But I was totally chill with being a part of something that already has this big franchise. I was I was on board with it 100. percent So yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Do you think it maybe it maybe helped um, <clears throat> not not really knowing about the game? Like maybe I don't know, like a, with nerves or something like that. Like I think yeah. for me, like if I had a gig like that, it would. And I found out I was like, oh shit, okay, this is big. Oh god, I hope I don't I hope I don't butcher this. Um, but do you yeah. think that maybe helped? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I think, and that's exactly how I am too. How you just explained is very much how I am. That if I know that something has this big weight on it, it adds more pressure on you to make sure that you do a good job, you know, to make sure that you hold that name up and all that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was, it was cool that I didn't know because I, I made it my own, even though yeah, Steph is a new character and all that, but still I, I, I just went into it knowing what I knew and and even even with that and then getting the responses I've I've received with stuff is just really great too because I I didn't know what I was, you know, what this huge thing before well or you know after this the actual first season I didn't know what it was about so to be able to grasp onto a character and and do her well and do her justice um mm. just the knowledge I had was really really great so yeah. Well, awesome. Good deal. For sure. So, what's your favorite thing about Steph? Um, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but I think she's a very relatable character, and I think that that's a character that people, you know, she's a character that people needed in the game, you know, because with Steph, you know, you know, I'm sure she has her own story, you know, her own, you know, backstory and all that, but what we can see on the outside is a chick who doesn't care what people think about her. She's, you know, all out there and goes for what she wants. And I think mm -hmm. that's really enticing for people. I think that people see that and, and, and they're like, yeah, you know, like get it stuff. You know, they're like, <laughs> what's she going to do? She doesn't, she doesn't care. She's like, Ooh, Rachel, what's up? You know, she has no, she doesn't care. She's unapologetic. And I think that that's what, what I really love about her. And um, yeah, she's just, we know, we know about stuff. You know, we know what she's about. And I think that that's what people love as well. So uh, that's something me and a friend were talking about, um, especially after episode two, where Rachel, uh, sorry, uh, where Steph straight away is just like, hey, I think I'm going to make a move on Rachel. Like, we don't know whether, like, Steph even knows that Rachel's into girls or anything like that. But she's, like, so confident in herself. And she's just like, I'm going to do this. I want this. So I'm going to do it. And it's exactly. just like, really inspiring and awesome to see. Like, you don't get to see that often. Yeah, and um, yeah, exactly. And it and it's just something that it's so she's so nonchalant about it too. You know, she's like, yeah, I think you're cute. You're a girl, whatever. You're cute. I want to talk to you. You know, and I think that's again something that's just so like, you know, amazing for people to see somebody just being so nonchalant about that. And um, yeah, she's she's seriously a badass character. And um, yeah, we. We need more of her, you know? <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Absolutely. Preach. It's uh it's also like really cool to see like in a high school setting, um, to have a character that's just so unapologetically them. Because, I mean like <clears throat> I mean, not that it's impossible to have, but I mean like when I was that age, you know, I was still trying to figure myself out and I thought I knew who I was and I tried to be who I thought I was, but it was still like I don't know. It's like really cool. Like even even though like she's like a completely different perspective from mine. Like it's still like I don't know. It is just an encouraging character. Just yeah. To, just to see yeah, someone yeah. that is them. And again, I think that that I think that that's what the game. You know, it's a great addition to the game because you know all there's so many people out there who need that inspiration to be who they are you know mm -hmm. to be who they genuinely are and I and I hope that Steph helps them see that you know helps them say hey I can just be who I want to be you know but yeah <laughs> life is Steph hashtag get it trending yeah. life is Steph yeah. please <laughs> put it on blast yes 
It's like life is stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did uh, did voicing dungeon master extraordinary stuff inspire you to play any D and D? And if so, uh, what sort of character do you think you would make? Um. So this is some <laughs> this is something that um I it's kind of we're 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 thinking of doing something. We're th- I'm thinking of doing something, and I'm really excited to uh, move forward with it. So um hopefully everybody will be excited about it as well. But yeah, so um, yeah, I would love to play D&D and I, I never have played D&D before. Um, I've had friends that play D&D and um, I get to see and, and, and watch them and see how exciting and talk about it and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think that if I were to be a character, like I would be some kind of like rogue thief character. <laughs> Because I know it's funny. I, I, cause I just, I don't know. Like I love really like, I don't know. Can I like cuss on this? Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, great. I would really, I like fucking shit up. Like, and I like, <laughs> I like, like really fucking over people in games and stuff. Like that's just kind of like how I am and it's horrible, but I just get joy out of it <laughs> because that's not how I am in real life. Like I would never just like, you know, mess somebody's life up, but being sure. able to do it in a game or something would just be so fun and just to take people by surprise when they're not looking and just be like dude you, you know you weren't paying attention this is what happens so <laughs> um yeah i'm excited to i'm excited to play D. so yeah that's cool I, I think uh a few of us here at uh here on the podcast are big fans of D. i play with uh i play with joey i'm the dungeon master and a game with joey in it and uh sean cool. just started your dungeon master now too right sean uh, yeah, um, well, I played D&D, like, a couple of times in the past, uh, but after playing episode one, I was like, damn, I really want to, I really properly want to get into this, because, like, I, I love Steph so much, and I was like, I just, I, she's so cool, I was like, this looks so, like, so much fun, and my, uh, a bunch of my friends from uni, we were like, hey, yeah, we want to play it, so we do, like, a D&D night every week now. That's awesome! awesome. That's so cool <laughs> Yeah, I have a really great friend um, from a high school who's actually out here in um, in L.A. with me, and he's a he's a dungeon master as well. And when I told him that I was doing Life is Strange um, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm voicing Steph, he literally like dropped his phone and like couldn't speak. And I was like, <laughs> are you good? Are you good? Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's cool. Um, and yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. It was cool. Um, have you gone through, uh, have you played any of Life is Strange season one? I, w- I watched. Um, the, so the person who I uh, streamed with the, before the storm, Ace of Ransom, right. I watched his whole playthrough for the first oh. season. So like I, I posted up like I was watching a movie and just like watched the whole thing. Um, <laughs> and so I've seen his playthrough. And yeah. It was cool that... Uh, and throughout season one, there was like a uh, in like the dorms and stuff. There was these notice boards where the students could post up whatever they wanted, and there was always a uh, messages. There was always uh, like flyers for a D for like a D and D group uh, for like game nights at Blackwell at the school. Yeah. And uh, and so it was it was cool to play through before the storm and actually, you know, actually have that like happen. And I guess it turns out to be. I guess it's maybe feasible that it could be still Steph that's, like, running the game later on in Season 1. But uh, it it was cool to, like, see that, like, actually, like, follow through. through. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they they definitely did a great job of, you know, catching those, you know, details and and putting them in before the storm. Right, yeah. That's very cool. You should, uh, if you you do end up playing Dungeons & Dragons, I know we will, and I'm sure the rest of the the rest of the fans for Before the Storm would learn. love to hear uh, how it works out for you. Yeah, definitely. For sure, we'll let you guys know. Well, <clears throat> looking looking forward to that if that happens. Me too. All right, um, so our next question is, um, would Rachel and Chloe be the kind of people um, you'd want to hang out with in real life? So I think that I think that teenage Katie, yes, I think that Katie now I would not be able to handle their angst. <laughs> <laughs> you and I'm, but, I'm with you there. <laughs> but but Katie in like drama club in high school, yes, like, like 
Rachel would be a friend of mine. Chloe would be somebody who would like pop in and be like, Hey, like cool. And we'd be, we'd be cool with Chloe for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that, um, yeah, I think that, that Rachel is, she's definitely somebody that I would have hung out with and probably did hang out with in high school. So, yeah. I guess even too, uh, Steph for that matter would, uh, would someone like Steph be someone you'd want to hang out with? I think, and I think there's, I think there's a question kind of along the lines of that later on. Um, but okay. yeah, I, I, I can answer that now or I can get into that later. Uh, we'll say, we'll, we'll say what it. You choose. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll save it then if it's later on. I don't okay. want to yeah. blow up someone else's spot. <laughs> Um, so aside from Steph, who, who would, who would you say is your favorite character from Before the Storm? Um, after playing episode two, I would, I would say Rachel. Um, I, yeah, (laughs) I think she's, you know, dealing, I think she's dealing with like a lot of shit and, you know, and, and I think that's exactly why Chloe and her like need to be shipped. I'm sorry. Like I'm with them like all the way. (laughs) Like I like I think that, yes I know I know I know it's a touchy subject and it's like one side or the other but after playing episode two I mean like it's I I wanted them like I was waiting for that you know that that I said so can I say things like can I say things in this now because people played it right yeah I don't want to say yeah. real thing okay. was I was waiting for that kiss. Fine. waiting for it I wanted them to kiss when it was like when it was like kiss Rachel I was like is there even a is this even a question seeing <laughs> yeah. that. Like, <laughs> Well, he didn't. I was like, wait, you asked about her tattoo? You gave her a brick? What are you guys doing? Get off. Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> like, why? What? What? So, um, yeah, no, I, I love Rachel. And and besides her and, and Chloe, you know, as, as like a thing, I think that, you know, Rachel, Rachel has this free spirit attitude that is so inviting to a lot of people. And, you know, though I, I think it's her being like – I think that, you know, she might use it as like a front sometimes because of the stuff she's dealing with. Um, I think she just kind of gets lost in, in this feeling of being, you know, just whatever, you know, I'm, I'm so happy. And da, 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 da. I think that she still is that person. Um, she might just use it to, to lift her up. But I think she is a she's a fierce spirit. And and um, I think that some people, you know, can't get to that place of spontaneity and free spirit. And I think that that's why. I love her because the same thing with Steph, you know, Steph makes people feel like they can be themselves. And I think that Rachel makes people feel like they can just do anything in the world, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. So <clears throat> got some yeah, with Rachel, high yeah, insight. With, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks. Because with Rachel too, I mean, she, she's unapologetic too as well. You know, she, obviously she's unapologetic, <laughs> but you know, right. Um, yeah, she does, she does what she wants to do too. Um, and it's, it's a really cool thing to see. And I just, I love the scene where she's just dancing in the street. You know, there's like freaking like ash from the fire falling on her and she doesn't even like, burn down the whole entire like Oregon forest. But and she's just so happy, you know, she's just dancing <laughs> in the street. She's loving life. She, and, and it's like, gosh, like it makes me want to go back to those times because I think that that, you know, being being an adolescent and, and running around at night and stuff is just such a it's a joyous thing, you know. So I I do I really like. Them. Yeah, well, I think you had a good point too. Like I think this was uh, aptly timed, um, you know, especially like in this day and age, like to see uh, characters like Rachel and Steph who are so self assured and uh, confident, and you know just are their own person and, and are unapologetic like that. I think is really cool and inspiring for a lot of people. So yeah, that definitely makes sense. And I don't know, it was, it was very well put like the way you compared the two of them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely it with everything, you know, with, with what kids growing up now, like, you know, they, they have access to internet, they have access to all these things that we didn't necessarily have growing up. And it's, it's just mm-hmm. so different. And, and I feel like, I feel like, you know, teenagers, kids are, are less likely to, to show the truth, you know, the true selves, because they're scared of all these things happening. And, you know, 
it's it's interesting now versus and it, it was even interesting you know when you know our parents were growing up it's just changing but it's it's nice to see a game bringing that back in and reminding people hey like this is how to be a teenager you know so. right yes yeah, getting to getting to be free like yeah it was it was really it was really a touching touching scene yeah and i think i think too with like uh you know, going going back, it is like we had before the internet. Um, there was you had like these little like micro clicks, you know, these little microcosms, these cults of personality that kind of like shaped like how you were trying to fit in and all that. And then, but now with with you know, you can talk to people all over the world, as is evident here. Um, and so it it adds a new dynamic and. Uh, I don't know. So like people pulling in influences from all over the world, trying to like see how that fits in their own lives. And, uh, it can be really, really overwhelming. Um, and I think, I think, uh, like out of all, all the stuff that happens in episode two, I think just the whole, like getting to be yourself was what I love the most. And like, just, yeah, like you, like you said, you know, um, just kind of parroting what you said at this point, so I'll stop. But <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, well, on the subject of you know encouragement and empowerment, um, what would you say to those who aspire to become actors? Oh, I love this question. When I saw it, I was like, <laughs> yeah, because I, I mean, I could like I could go on and on, so I'll try to keep it you know as as precise and short as I can. Um, but oh my gosh, like this is one of the hardest jobs to, to, you know, to chase to, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. And like, I'll say it's, it's any kind of, any kind of art, any kind of, you know, music, anything like that, that these industries are just so hard because there's so many people wanting to do it. You know, there's so many people out there who want to do, want to be an actor, want to be a musician, want to be a singer, all this stuff. Um, but if you truly like want to become an actor, you just have to jump in and go for it. Like one of the one of the things that I that I hold really dear to me is um, from my time in college where we would talk about the unknown. And and that was just the unknown in your exploration of being like like in a play or or in like a composition you created. Um, Mm -hmm. But I, I took that as like jumping into the unknown in life, like just jumping in and not knowing where it's going to take you. And so I hold that to me really closely. Um, and I mean, that, that was a big part of me moving. I was like, I have no idea what's going to happen. And I have no idea if I'm going to be here in, in, in two, three, five years, who knows, but I just have to just jump in my car, pack it, pack it full of all my stuff and drive and get to LA. And, you know, you just kind of take the steps. Um, so you just have to, you have to, you have to be, you know, you, you have to be willing to just, just jump in and, and not, not worry what's going to happen. Um, and, and no, the biggest other, another thing too, is know that you're going to fail. You will fail at some point. I will fail at some point. And I think that's just with any job too. Like, and, and in life we will fail. But the beautiful thing about failing is that you learn from it. You know, if you never failed, you're just going to be living this like boring life. Like the fact that you fail, you're going to look back and say, okay, I fail. Like, (laughs) Like with Life is Strange, the first season with, you know, you, you fail, you fail, but you know, with her, you can rewind and, and, you know, make different choices, but it's like, we can't rewind, but we can, we can look at what we did wrong and we can make it better, you know, or, you know, I failed, meaning like I didn't get this audition or I didn't get, you know, I was so close. I didn't get that one role. And, you know, it's, it's not, you have to embrace the failure. You have to accept it. You have to know that, that that's okay, that you didn't get that role, use it. And, and figure out what you can do differently. But, um, yeah, I mean, just becoming it like, and with being here and being in, whether it's like a, you know, you're trying to do stage or trying to do film, you have to be so persistent with it. You have to, I mean, I am, I'm self submitting myself every day, every, every day. And you have to get out there and you have to meet people and make connections. And, and I mean, it's your life. Like it is your whole job. Even if we, most of us do hold other jobs to try and sustain us because when you first start off as an actor, you know, you're not making a lot of money because you're doing a lot of stuff, you know, for free or either for, you know, not a lot of pay, but it's because we love it. And like, that's another thing too, is you have to love this. You truly have to love whatever you're doing in life, I think, to, to, Mm -hmm. to, 
want to stay doing it. Um, but yeah, you just, and you have to know that, yeah, it's gonna, you're going to get more rejections than you will, you know, parts. And you just have to know that it's subjective. Like this whole industry is subjective because, um, you know, somebody wants somebody to look a certain way or whatever. And it's not, it's not because you're a bad person or because you, you know, you're not pretty enough or whatever. It's just because you didn't fit the part and there is a part out there for you. And you just have to keep auditioning. You have to keep trying. If you truly want this, you can't stop at it. You can never stop. Um, and eventually you'll, you'll, you'll have that break, you know, and may, having a break is different for every actor. You know, I think it's what it's, it's whatever you feel or wherever you feel like you want to end up as an actor is that, you know, so, but um, yeah. I, I keep going, but I'll stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it's it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it gets any better than that. We can just end the episode right here. <laughs> 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 um, no, that's really cool. And uh, honestly, it's it's just great life advice in general. You know, even for people who don't want to be actors, like I I struggle with that a lot. Um, just the idea of failure and and how to turn it around into something you know good and something that fuels you. Uh, so that's really good advice and. Yeah sounds like you're very passionate about it and about what you do. So thanks for sharing. Yeah, of course. Thank you. I, I love it. And I love being able to share my experiences and, and I love helping people. And if I can help people in any way, whether, you know, it's me as a person or me through my acting, I mean, that's, that's what I love. And so, yeah. It's, um, it's really nice. Like every time, like we had Kylie last week, she was telling us about, her experience of like getting into acting and it's really nice uh, for me personally to hear because I'm currently at university studying acting so that's oh, like, really like yeah that's what I want to go into and I've like I've just oh finished my first term well congratulations no that's awesome that's so good that's good that you're able to to hear from from people who are you know doing it right now like out of school and all that stuff because I mean use it seriously oh yeah. I just want to like talk you now like face to face and be like come on let's do this together (laughs) (laughs) yeah well I mean where you are right now in in university like you're having fun you know like have fun with it like that being in university in in theater is is all about exploration you know you're trying to figure out what you want to do once you get out of university like and and I think that that's yeah it's just all exploration and learning and um yeah that's cool that's i'm really excited for you i i would truly wish that i could go back and and, and do it all over again because it's so fun <laughs> yeah no i'm loving it so far i love it so much like you said uh, like you love it so much and I, I love acting so much and i feel like i'm like at the pinnacle of my training right now so it feels yeah it feels good like i feel like in a very good place so like i said it's really really awesome to hear like your own experience good good cool well, you can always contact me if you want outside of this, if you have any questions or anything, and I would love to talk with you. So Thank you so much. I might, I might take you up on that. Do it, do it. <laughs> um, well, <clears throat> on that note, uh, that was our own questions that we had for you. And um, coming up, we have our fan questions, and uh, I just want to – uh, start this off saying thank you, everyone that submitted. Um, everyone that submitted questions in. Uh, we got some really good ones. Um, yep. Yeah, um, <laughs> the first question we have comes from, I hope I'm saying this right. If not, please don't hate me too much. <laughs> it's Candela. Uh, they ask, would you like to see a romantic relationship between Steph and Rachel? <laughs> Hi. I... I okay, Chloe Chloe and Rachel need each other. I'm really sorry. Like as biased as I am for Steph, like I love Steph, but like Chloe and Rachel need each other and Steph can't destroy that. I'm mm. sorry. <laughs> like, <laughs> but but that being said, I think that if Steph and Rachel like hung out, they would for sure hit it off. I cause you know, they're very similar, like we were talking earlier about, you know, their their way of thinking and all that. I totally but I honestly don't think that like Rachel knows Steph exists. I don't think she does. I know. Maybe so, she's bad. Yeah, I'm like, is there hope for Steph? I don't know. Because I don't think Rachel knows she's, you know, exists. And it's like, damn. But, yeah, I just, 
Chloe and Rachel need each other. I, I love Steph. She's she's great, but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There's um like me and my friend, um, we were talking and we were like talking about how like realistically, like we feel like Steph would have a thing for Chloe as well. Like I don't know, I just feel it in my bones. And like I don't know. I feel especially yeah. she's like straight away she's kinda like, Hey Chloe, I know that you're having feelings for a girl, like if you want to talk to me. I don't know, they'd hit it off. I feel it. Yeah, yeah I know. Okay, for, for sure. so, there's a lot of unanswered questions there. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, uh, you can you can tell too in episode one uh when Chloe starts getting into the campaign, that Steph is like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> What's, yeah. Up, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Chloe? What's up, Chloe? She didn't, I, she never <laughs> guessed that Chloe would be into it, you know? And yeah, yeah I think there's that little spark of, oh, this girl's kind of cool. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, our next question uh, uh, comes from Kedge, and he asks, uh, do you personally share a passion for movies and fantasy like Steph? And if so, how did you find your love for those interests? Well, I think that with movies and fantasy, um, I think especially like, again, with our day and age and all that stuff, it's 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 just really beautiful what those can do for us. I mean, it's an escape. And that's why I that's why I love it. I'm um, you know, I don't I don't play d and I've never done those kinds of games before, but I can respect it and I, I appreciate what it does for everybody else. I love movies. I love going to movies because, yeah, you just you you sit there and you're lost. Your life lost in somebody else's life. And and it doesn't matter what kind of movie it can be. You know, it can be an adventure movie, a romantic movie, a horror movie, whatever. Um, it's just nice to be able to to step away from the reality of what you're dealing with in your life and and to jump into this completely new world, you know, and and just forget about what you're having to deal with. And that's, again, um, that's another reason why I love acting, because I can help with the escape with other people, you know, and because um, I think it's super important because we all get so caught up in living our day to day life that we we need that break. You know, we need that we need that escape. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I didn't I didn't see this one get asked, so I'm going to ask it. Um, what what would be your dream role? What would be my dream role? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> really funny. So, um, my, for a really long time, like before I came out here and all that stuff, I really just like wanted to be, and this isn't my dream role, but this is just some role that I really wanted to be in like a scary horror movie, like where like there's just this like random chick staring in a corner, like with her like freaking eyes just like bulging out of her head, just staring at you and like being, a, that's like a jump out moment. Mm-hmm. I really wanted that. So maybe, um, be, that, that would be like amazing, you know, like the ring girl or the like grudge girl. That would be really fun. Um, no, but I, I would love to be honestly like a badass femme fatal tomb raider character. That would be amazing. Um, that would be, that would be just be so amazing to do. Um, because I think that I, I respect those people so much. I think that, badass female characters are amazing and to be able to just like go in there and just like destroy and destruct and like you know oh it's so cool oh a lot of my a lot of the roles that I've received so far being um being here in LA have just been like the weirdest variety of roles um I get called in a lot for um like street rat characters like just <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not kidding you like, like homeless people I've gotten called in for homeless people before and I'm totally fine with it like that's awesome I love it um I got um called in and I booked a commercial for this home security brand and I was a I was a robber like they they hired me for a robber role for a thief and the actual character name was sketchy person number two I was like yeah <laughs> sketchy person number two. <laughs> But, you know, and there's a thing, like, I think that it's it's just so interesting. Um, I'm kind of going on a little rant here. Not a rant, but eh. so um, I apologize. But there was um, an audition that I went out for uh, for another commercial, and it was for uh, a medical commercial. And it was a side effect. Like, you had to do the side effects of the drug. And they, preface, they prefixed it with saying, you know, you're going to – you're going to have to like have your tongue falling out of your mouth like during the audition and you're going to have to be like twitching your face. 
And literally, I'm not kidding you, half of the females in that audition room left after that explanation. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Half of them just left. And I was like, what? I was like, are you serious? <laughs> Who cares? Like, you're, you're doing what you love. I mean, that's, that's the point about it. You're trying to embody people that you aren't. You know what I mean? Like, and so to, to get the role of like sketchy person number two or street rat um, or like goth girl, I love it because those characters are fun. <laughs> you know, those characters are fun. They're not, I mean, I would gladly accept like girl next door. That's awesome. I would love that too. But it's like girl next door versus like homeless sketchy person. Like whole, I would, I would pick homeless sketchy person. There's such a story there. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's room to make that character awesome. And so, um, but yeah, so, but definitely my, my dream role would be like a badass female character in some, you know, action. Like that would be really cool. Have you well, seen, and also um, like, I would imagine it like, you know, you would need to be versatile in this line of work, you know, you'd need to show that you can play different kinds of roles. So jump at yeah. any, anything you get. Mm-hmm. Your emotional range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Definitely. And I, I would love to as well get into comedies. I mean, that would just be so fun. I'm a very like, like, I want to say like low key, but I'm not, but like vulgar, I'm very vulgar. Like that's my humor is very vulgar. I have a very like, and, and, um, I, I think that, I don't know. I just, I love, I love that kind of comedy. I don't know why. I don't know why I like that kind of comedy, but I do. And, um, (laughs) Like, you know, like James Franco, Seth Rogen. I, 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 I love that kind of stuff. And I think that that would also be really cool to to get involved with is comedy. Comedy is so unbelievably hard to get involved yeah. with, though, too. Oh, my mm-hmm. gosh. Because, I mean, it's very – the way I look at it is it's very um, – it's, you know, it's like it's like the Vortex Club. You know what I mean? Like, you have right. to <laughs> invite me. And, um, and so – Good reference. Yeah. 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 Uh, but I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see where it goes. But that's one thing. Like, yeah, I'm very open to everything. I'm, I'm, you know, at that point where I'm taking anything I can get and, and roll and rolling with it, you know? So. Yeah. Um, with the whole comedy thing, I'm like right there with you. Like I do a lot of comedy work uh, just because I mean, I'm a huge fan of Saturday Night Live. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's just so funny. And Kate McKinnon, she's just, like, she's everything I w- want to be in life. Um, exactly. I know. I know exactly what you mean, hands down. Yeah, and, like, the way that she's just so free of the characters, like you were saying about those people walking out the walking out of the auditions, it's, it's like, no matter how weird you look, like, you, it's still mm-hmm. a role. And, like, just go crazy. Like, be this character. So, like, that's kind of why I have such a love for comedy myself. Because, like, you can do whatever you want and, like, it's it's just fun and like it's hard to do though like you said it's really hard oh, yeah. it is and it, it takes a lot of um i mean you have to you have to be so comfortable with yourself you have to be so comfortable with yourself mm-hmm. and you have to know that who you are you have to know who you are to be able to let go in comedy i think yeah and mm-hmm. that people are going to have their opinions i feel like people have more opinions about you as a you know a comic than you know you as a uh an action actor, you know what I mean? Like I, cause, cause com- comedians do weird things. We do weird things and, and we don't care, you know? And, um, so it takes a lot of, um, it takes a lot of knowing who you are to, to do that job, I think. Yeah. And I think, I think, yeah, like that, uh, that's pretty poignant. Cause like, if you think about it, like, you know, action stars and all that, like they're, their roles are basically choreographed. Whereas like for comedy to really work, it has to be, you know, the actor has to bring it themselves. Like they have to. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's more so about like the actor's delivery than than in action roles and stuff like that. Yeah, and a lot of the movies that you see, a lot of the the comedic movies you see. I mean, yes, they they have a script, but you know, they're always you know wanting improv, you know, Im- improv to happen naturally throughout that. You know, and right. you can even see like, especially like in James Franco movies, like. There's a lot, a lot, and like Seth Rogen, a lot of that's improvised. But, and I think that's where a lot of the fun comes, you know, for the audience too, because, um, yeah, it, it's 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 interesting to see what these what these actors can come up with on the fly, you know. And I, yeah, that's why we love Saturday Night Live because it's just amazing what they can do. Improv is so hard. 
Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, it's so hard. It's in, it's so hard. But when you can see a really good um, comedic who's an you know an improviser, you just you just want to just you know bow down because it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a really hard. Especially with um, improvisation, like, and, it, like, comedy itself, like, y- maybe the jokes and, like, the things that you're doing is funny to yourself, but then you've also got that constant, like, thing in the back of your mind, and it's like, is that, is these, are these jokes going to land for the audience? Because you never know how someone's going to take it. It's just, it's, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. I think that that's, yeah, and I think that that's just, like, another thing of you just having to, to know yourself and be comfortable with who you are. Mm. And I think that that's, like, the, the one thing that, improvisers kind of run into is am I being funny yeah and I don't think it's something that you you know as an improviser you need that you can ask you know you can't you can't think about that you just have to go out there be who you are and know what you're doing is going to be received well yeah so that's yeah. uh that's continuing continually good advice yeah <laughs> I don't even know what question this like started from. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I kind of I derailed it with asking what your your dream role would be, but uh, yeah, we'll get back. Sorry, sorry, fans. Uh, we'll get back to the fan questions now. <laughs> okay. So, there are no tangents. Uh, so the next question is from Kedge again, and they'd like to know: um, Do you see yourself coming back to Life is Strange for another appearance if offered a part? And if so, what is your ideal character you would like to return as? If if I was offered a role for Life is Strange again, I would freak out and I would take it in a heartbeat and I wouldn't think twice about it. I would be so ecstatic. Um, and honestly, like coming back as Steph would be ideal because, um, yeah, I I love Steph and, you know, she, she I feel like her and I are like next, you know, next to each other, you know, walking down the street and like I want her to come with me, you know what I mean? Um, and I want to go with her. So. Um, but honestly, like I would be grateful for any, to voice any Life is Strange character. Um, so yeah, I mean, if they, if Steph, if there wasn't room for Steph in, in another season or whatever, like I, if, and then they do, did want me to voice a character, it wouldn't matter what character. I would just be honored to be a part of it again. So yeah. That's awesome. Um, it's awesome to hear that you've had such a great, great experience with it that you'd like so ready to just come back as anything. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, our next question is from Yasmin. Yasmin, um, do you feel your personality is close to Steph's? Yeah, so this is the question that I was thinking of um, a little bit before. Um, I can definitely see similarities for sure. Um, I think when we talk about the fact that she is who she is, um, I think that that's the biggest similarity because I feel I feel like she, you know, is unapologetically herself as well as I am. Um, and I'm not afraid to be blunt. I'm not afraid to 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 ask what I want in life and to, you know, to get those things. And that's exactly what she's like, too. Um, and so I think that that's the biggest similarity. Um, but I mean, yeah, so we but we are very different people, too. Like, I you know, I'm straight and I don't play, you know, I'm not a DM master and I'm not a stage manager. But I think that coming down to the wire, I think that, yeah, we do share some similarities in our personalities for sure. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> maybe there's, well, I'm sure there's quite a bit of like confirmation bias in it, or, but it, it really seems like, uh, I don't know, it really seems like Steph would not be Steph if, especially having this like this interview and talking with you and getting some like kind of behind the scenes uh, a look into to who you are. It really seems like uh, Steph would not be Steph if it weren't for you. Yeah. You're like literally gonna make me start crying right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's what like, we do. <laughs> uh, and and it's that like it's that reassurance. Oh, you might get some tears out of me. It's that reassurance right there that like keeps me going as an actor seriously the fact that you just said that that she wouldn't be who she is without my voice like to to have to be here for over a year pursuing one of the hardest things that I can you know that I can see is is almost you know for a lot of people people back out of it you know they they can't do it anymore but to be here a year and just to hear you say that 
I, I, I'm speechless. So thank you so much. That was, that was really, I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> sorry, sorry to, to tear you up. No, no, it's so it's good. I love it. But ah, yeah, it just feels really good. So thank you. Yeah, no, like I'm just gonna like back up on that because I feel like you deserve it. Um, but like I said, like Steph is genuinely like one of my favorite characters in like the whole game series. Like I have so much love for her, like especially as like a queer woman, and like I just she's so cool. Like she's the queen of the nerds, and like you like I, and coming from an actress as well. Like maybe I'm not as good as you, but um, but like seeing your performance is just awesome, and you like. The, the way that you personify Steph is just incredible. And I like I just really love Steph as a character and I love your performance as her. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for saying all of that. Seriously, thank you so, so much. <laughs> thank you. I'm, and, and, and again, like that's why, yeah, just hearing everybody's, you know, responses to Steph makes me, makes my skills, my talent, all of that justified to know that, hey, this is where I need to be. Like, I need to be, this is exactly where I need to be right now. And so again, thank you guys. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun when we get to do like an actual episode on, on stuff. Uh, Cause we get through and we do uh, like character episodes. Um, so it'll be, it'll be cool. We'll make sure to uh, send it your way. Send it your way. Uh, yeah. We, uh, <laughs> we have a lot of love here at Blackwell podcast for stuff. So yeah. Good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna yeah, bring you up in the march. To, um, to, like I knew that she was gonna, you know, I I knew like it was almost inevitable that she was going to be a hit, you know. But I had no idea that she was gonna become this fan favorite that she is. And so it's just been it's been a great ride. Is it? Yeah. I was gonna bring up. We did a uh, we did a live stream. We did a live stream a little before. Uh, was that before episode one? Yeah, it was, be- it was right maybe. before. Yeah. yeah, it was right before before the storm came out. And we talked to uh, Alejandro Arque, one of the game directors. And um, he told us uh, he was excited to hear what we all had to say whenever we played the new episode. And he had said that uh, even in-house, like in the development, he, he's with Square Enix in the... Mm-hmm in the development studio that they had a new favorite character and he was eager to see who, if it would line up with our new favorite character. And then the next day after we all played the episode, we all got on Twitter and messaged him and we all unanimously said Steph. And he responded. He was like, yep, Steph's our favorite too. Uh, <laughs> life is Steph. Uh, life. Yeah, hashtag, hashtag life is Steph. Steph. Let's get going. <laughs> I, yeah, I keep seeing people like commenting saying, "Yeah, if we just had like a uh, like a D and D game of just like Steph playing with everybody, like we'd play it." <laughs> yeah, I know I would <laughs> for sure. Uh, there's a f- pretty funny story. Um, um, when I was part of the playtesting for Before the Storm back in it was July, right? Yeah. Really? Yeah, back in July. Oh, so, that's so cool. I. I knew about Steph for like a month and I couldn't say it to anybody. So I was just like, yeah. I was just like sitting in my room, just quiet, just, just thinking about, I just want to scream about this I can't leave character. my room. I'm going to say everything. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. I remember coming back for another session and um, Webb had told me, you know, he said we did a, you know, game test with, with some people and they love your role. They were like, your, your scene is your, is the favorite part of the episode one and i was like what sweet i think that was the realization i think that might have been the realization that this was going to be a really cool thing so that's cool to hear that you were part of that that's awesome yeah and it's all because of the podcast i was able to be a part of it which is amazing cool. look at you see that's what that's what that's how you do things in life you make it happen yeah <laughs> it happen. yeah and i think um the, a lot of the positive response was largely due to like there just hasn't there hasn't been a character like Steph yet you know like well this, it was already said but she just has her own like unique persona like she brings a little bit of like humor and 
um, again, that, that self-assuredness. I feel like so much of season one was centered around uh, doubt and fear and uh, trying to, you know, support each other. And there's a lot of that in uh, Before the Storm as well. But it's just so cool to see, like, this, this like, rock of a person who's just, like, exactly. this, like, p- pillar of stability. So I think that's, that's why she was – one of the reasons she was so well-received. Yeah, that's a really good description of her. She's definitely a rock, for sure. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> um so with that uh valerie asks what was your favorite thing about voicing stuff oh the my favorite thing was the it's the D &D game hands down like being (laughs) able to be the the dungeon master was the coolest thing that i've ever done as an actor so far i'm not kidding you like it was so cool yeah i'm i'm dead serious too it was amazing to be able to Cause those are the kinds of, those are the kinds of roles we want, you know, we want to be able to get really deep inside these roles. And, and I think the fun thing about being a, voicing Steph as a, as a DM was that she, you know, had all these really nitty gritty lines and like, you just really like, you know, like, you know, we want to have the flesh melt off the bones kind of, you know, it was just so <laughs> fun to be able to like embody that. And just, to, oh, it was so awesome. And I, yeah, when I, when I um, was in the sessions and I was doing these long lines, um, I mean, I would, I would, I was stationed right there and I was just, my body would get into it and my hands would get into it. And I'm sure I looked ridiculous, but I was like a hundred percent in every single line that I said when she was, <laughs> when she's being a DM, like, Oh, like I would, I, I loved it. It was so fun, but definitely very challenging too. You know, it's, it's, it's very challenging, especially as a voice actor, because, um, you know, that's a lot of stuff to say. And it's a lot of very, um, you have to have a lot of voice control, I think as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's challenging. It was fun. Um, and it was a big exploration. So yeah, I loved it. It's a, uh... That's that's like legitimately awesome because uh, man, I was so I was so excited about that having that in there. I was like, because I don't think I don't think there had any been there had ever been any mini game in any game that I've played that was like a hey play this D and D campaign and I was like oh fuck yeah that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I know, and they have to you know they have to say like this tabletop game because you know they right, can't right. D&D, so it's like yeah. This tabletop game, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a lot of fun. And uh, have being somebody who who has never played D and D or anything of the like, um, not not for you know, not that I never wanted to. I just you know, I, I had a couple friends who wanted me to, but it was like more of a time commitment thing. Uh, okay. I would still like to at some point. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, it was really cool to just get a taste of that. And and sort of the the meta aspect of a game within a game, like, I just mm-hmm. thought it was really. So I can only imagine how fun it was to actually be a part of it. Oh yeah, hands down, it was it was cool. And just again with with Phil, you know, voice directing, you know, he was like, don't be afraid to just to get into it, like just really get into it. I mean, like you know, she he's like Steph is like messed up at this point, like she just loves it, just get into it. And I was like, dude, okay, I love this, thank you. <laughs> like you know, so yeah. I think you're up, Sean. Yes. Sorry. Wait. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> I can't count, I think. No, I can't count. That. I Jacob's can't. question. I'm sorry about this, yep. <laughs> sorry, I failed maths like five times. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay, we're not live. <laughs> true. Uh, we have a question from Jacob, and... They say, how does it feel to be a part of the Life is Strange series? Amazing. Um, the game is not only huge with numbers, but with the underlying messages and like how relatable it is and just how it makes you feel after every episode. It's just a beautiful game that tests its limits. And I think everyone involved has done an amazing job. Um, and um, yeah, like I, I can't I literally can't stop talking about the fandom, though. It's just like amazing <laughs> um, being a part of the series and then and then just like being open, like welcomed with like open arms into this fandom as just like ugh, I love it. So, yeah, and this, so, it's, just, it's, a, it's a it's a it's a really great game. 
I mean, after w- watching the playthrough of, of just like, you know, the first season, every single episode left me with my mouth just dropped. Like, what is going to happen? You know, mm-hmm. thankfully, I can find out what's going to happen like right away because the next one's starting. But just but, you know, with, with Before the Storm, you know, we're left with these cliffhangers now and we have no idea what's happening. And and so it's just yeah, and it, I just can't get over the like seriously the feels you know, after, and like, even like during the episodes, it's like everything. I think, um, yeah, like I had already mentioned that I really loved the Tempest scene, but, but after, you know, and I don't know, um, what, what it was like for you, but because I had, um, got all the lines right, like, I don't know if it, this is how it was for everybody, but it was just like, um, Caliban went on there and like did an amazing job and did his thing. And I think that that was like something that if you didn't remember the lines that he didn't do a good job, I think, um, but after after Caliban came on and did his thing, um, you just uh, the music from Daughter starts playing and, it, and you just keep seeing the scene go on and them talking. And it's just like uh, and the music, the soundtrack is phenomenal, by the way. And I think that that's another reason why you get all these feels, because you get, you know, you have that music playing and you're just like, ah, like I love it. Like the last song in, before, in, in episode two just leaves you hanging and it's just great it's just perfect it's like perfect yeah. <laughs> with, with the soundtrack of before the storm um i sometimes get unintentionally sad with it like it just kind of <laughs> sneaks up on me yeah, yeah it's <laughs> definitely yeah I, I feel that too yeah i think that it's just this kind of somber music you know but it's mm-hmm. perfect for the game mm-hmm. yeah it's very cinematic too like it's just yeah it's it's really evocative and yeah, it, it does creep up on you, Jamie. I, I know what you mean. <laughs> You'll just have, like, a playlist, and then, like, a song will come on, and then suddenly you're crying, and you're like, what's happened to me? That was me, like, two hours ago. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Literally same. All right, yeah. so... Go ahead. Oh, oh okay. Um, up next... Uh, we have another question, a second question from Jacob. Uh, one of these, half of this you've already answered, but uh, he asks, have you ever played D&D, and are you a fan of Blade Runner? So yeah, I have not played D&D before, but I'm definitely planning on it, so I'll keep you all updated with that. Um, and um, I know you might all cringe, but I have not seen Blade Runner before. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> You're not alone. You've seen it either. Yeah. You need to see it. I know. I know. I need yeah. to. I definitely know I need to. And with, with the new one in theaters now, like, it's giving me more of a reason to watch the originals and then to watch the one in theater. So I do, I need to. And I've had multiple people tell me, like, Katie, you need to go to the, you know, watch the new Blade Runner, watch the new Blade Runner. Um, so it's definitely something that I will be doing. And I'm not just saying that. I actually am going to do it. <laughs> you see, I'm kind of, I have a weird way of watching movies. And when people recommend me, it's like, oh, you need to watch Blade Runner. It's like, okay, I'm I'm typing in like Blade Runner into Netflix and it's not there. And But I see recommenders like, oh, Footloose. So I just watch that instead. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know how it's related, but I'll watch it. And then I just completely like, forget about it. That is so funny. I know, right? You just you're like, ah, eh, whatever. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Blade Runner. Blade Runner is good. Um, it, I will say, it is it is a bit a bit aged. It is, yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. aged a bit, but. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. So, but it's so good though. <laughs> I said, oh god, the new one. Oh my god, it was so good. I oh, just, you went and saw it, Sean? I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> we'll have to talk about it. We do. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, uh, next question is from Rachel, and she would like to know, what is your favorite line that Steph has said? Yes, okay. So, my fa- there's like there there's two that I really love, um, both in the D&D. But it's, um, what do you do next? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Or just all of the variations of that line. Like, what'll it be? Or what do you do? I love those. And then also, your choice, newbie. I love that line. <laughs> yeah. And I was, that was like my, when I was able to post about the game, you know, to, to say, okay, guys, like, this is the game I'm in. I screenshotted that 
picture of her of, of Steph saying, your choice, newbie. And I was like, this is perfect. This is great. This is a great, like, invitation to, hey, guys, look what I'm doing. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. I, it used to be a point where whenever I heard the word newbie, I'd always think of Dr. Cox from Scrubs, but now I just think of Steph. Yes. <laughs> Yay! That's awesome! <laughs> yeah, that perfect. I love it. And she's just so, like, yeah, like, all these, like, intimidating lines, like, you know, but it's just, like, she's not, like, she's not intimidating. She's just, like, she's just having so much fun with it. And I think that's what I lo- why I love those lines. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's just such a and she's so into it. There's just a, a certain yeah. intensity to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is kind of That's just awesome. like a tiny little anecdote, but this question is from a really good friend of mine. Like this question you've just had is from like a super good friend of mine. And we have, I swear to you, we have spent countless hours talking about Steph. Like <laughs> countless hours. Like, we have so many memes. So if you ever want any Steph memes, I'll send them your way. Really? <laughs> Yeah, we're like I have so many. Oh, I want them all, please. Oh, like God. that's like I'm I'm literally like on like the internet every day seeing if I can find more like Steph art or Steph means. So please, <laughs> yeah. Like I want it. I want to make like a Steph art wall. That's what I want to do. I'm not kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah. Follow, yeah. follow Sean on Tumblr. <laughs> me, um, <laughs> me and uh, Rachel have kind of named ourselves the true Steph fans because that's we really we, all we talk about is Steph. <laughs> <laughs> Computer, show me pictures of Steph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our, um, our next question submitted by Rowan, and she asked, "How do you feel about becoming a representative of the LGBTQ plus community through your portrayal of Steph?" Yeah, well, I'm honored to play such like a like we've talked about. She's such a sure thing, you know. She is what she is, and she's not afraid to let everybody know that. Um, I think it's what I think it's what the game needs, you know, and what fans need. I think you know the game has all these underlying LGBTQ plus messages, um, mm-hmm. and then able to throw to the fans a character who's not afraid to say, "Hey, I'm a girl, and I'm interested in this other girl." Boom, mic drop. It's like amazing, you know, and I think everyone's kind of just like, whoa, like this is what we wanted. You know, this is what we wanted. And so how Steph is just so nonchalant about it. It's beautiful. Um, And, you know, like personally, like I've always said, like love is love and like love is really hard to find sometimes. And if you fall in love and it's genuine, it doesn't matter what gender equation it is, you know. So Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I think that it's a beautiful thing that they've done to to throw in this character who is so sure about herself and what kind of person you know she's interested in so yeah yes. so overall overall very good very good experience yeah and especially uh whilst i was like i remember when i saw in the journal and it was like these giant arrows pointing to step and it was like has kiss girls i was like what i was like she's so cool <laughs> I, love her. I i remember like literally everybody like the fandom was just like this look at this look look she's yeah. kissing Somebody's talking about being kissing girls. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, and but then, now I now I know it was just you and your friend who were posting all those things though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the episode. Um, That's like uh, and I was thinking about it and the way that Chloe is kind of like she's like Steph is so cool like she she likes girls and she doesn't give a shit about what people think about it. I'm like wow like 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 I was thinking about it when I was younger like if I knew like when I'm like because I had an older friend who was gay and she liked girls and like I saw her and I was like oh my god she's so cool like and at the point I didn't look, kind of know I was gay and now I look back and I'm like oh it's because like I was like like I wanted to be like that so the fact that if I had been able to see a character like Steph when I was younger in a video game I'd be like oh it was just like it's so self-reassuring like she's yeah. like you said like she's so sure of who she is and she's so proud of that and like it's just so good to see like it's refreshing in a way that I've never seen before yeah yeah no and then that's again that's so such good feedback I mean feedback for me feedback for the game directors I mean that's awesome to hear you know you're such a positive experience you've got from that so that's great yeah she's really like she's just really cool like she brings a like a lot of like when I see her I feel a lot of pride and like I'm just like a little gay trying to play the game but <laughs> oh I know <laughs> oh, I think that's awesome that's awesome that's that's just so great to hear yeah um yeah I know she yeah yeah that's awesome 
And I'm glad that, that I'm glad that with episode two, you, you know, everybody gets a little bit more of like, a, oh, so she's, you know, she's straight up like, what's up with you? What's up with Rachel? Mm. I love that because that's I'm sure. Yeah, you all everybody's just waiting for that, you know, from episode two. OK, what's going to happen with this? <laughs> like, So that's great. And I think especially like with Chloe, because obviously Chloe is kind of in a situation where she's starting to have feelings for this girl and she's like, oh, I don't know, like what's going on? Like she's not been in a situation before as far as we're aware. And it's like as it's made out. So I think it's like it's like a nice little detail that and there's a few de- details like that, like uh, me and a couple of friends, we were talking about how, like I said, when I was younger, there was girls who were like out as gay. And I was like, oh, they're so cool. Like I, I like I really admire them, but I didn't know why. And it's just like yeah. it's, it's such a cool detail that Chloe is just like, oh, she's so cool. Like, I, I yeah, I want to be like her. And it's like, you don't even know why, but we all know why. <laughs> yes, that's good. That's awesome. That's such a good, like, realization. That's, uh, yeah. Yeah. She doesn't, she's just like, exactly like how you were growing up. That's cool that you're able to relate so much to that. Yeah. And it's the same with a comment she makes about press from Blade Runner when she's like, she's talking about, well, she says that she's like, in the shower yeah no I don't I'm sure you've seen it um and she's uh and she's like don't know what that's about probably just want to be like her and I was like yes like because we all had like crushes when we were younger um Mm -hmm. we were like crushing on like this uh, like a lot of gay people have had crushes where they're crushing on the same gender and they're like no I just want to be like them they're just really cool like I just admire them it's not like that so like you're like looking back on it you're like oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess it is a little bit like that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Sweet. Well, um, the uh, the final fan question comes from my music manager, uh, and they ask, "How would you describe yourself with five words?" Um. Okay. I would say that I am hardworking. I would say that I'm goofy, outgoing. I can be kind of sassy, <laughs> and I'm really driven. Nice. Cool. That was, pretty, that was uh, <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I was counting on my hand to make sure that uh, you didn't go over or didn't go under. <laughs> yeah, so was I. <laughs> <laughs> what? You guys didn't, uh, didn't believe in me. I'm just kidding. That's awesome. That's so funny. Cool. Yeah, right. Of that, is anybody watched The Office where Dwight's like interviewing and he has to describe himself in three words and he just keeps going with more <laughs> and more words? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you everyone who submitted in uh, questions. And uh, Katie, thank you. God, thank you so much. It was such yeah. a such a good time talking to you. Yeah. No, thanks again. Thank you all so much for having me on this. Um, you were the first people that that contacted me for anything, and I was, you know, it was like it was through my website, and I was like, oh, this is so professional. I love it. And <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. Yeah, I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was, uh, I was excited. I was so excited. I was like, oh, it's starting. I cannot wait. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I was ecstatic to be asked to be on this podcast. And then, um, yeah, I've just, I'm, yeah, thank you guys so much. Well, we'd, uh, we would absolutely love to have you back if you're ever interested. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yeah. definitely. All right. Well, uh, well, we'll talk a little bit, a little bit off air about, uh, yeah. setting something up. But, um, again, thank you for, for your work, Steph. Um, to to reiterate like i don't think especially like now i don't think that steph could have been steph if it weren't voiced by you so Mm. um and to everyone listening i hope i hope that you have enjoyed your time Mm -hmm. Uh, make sure uh, to follow katie on all social media as well Mm -hmm. we'll put the link Uh, in the description let's get uh hashtag life is stuff trending Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Life is tough. Let's yep, let's go knock down on uh, some deck nine doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you guys again so much. It's been a, a real joy. Really enjoyed my time. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you. It's been great. So that was Katie Benz, voice of Steph. Wonderful guest. Yeah, really cool. Talk to her. 
definitely. Yeah, definitely. super, super fun to talk to you. So let's get into some housekeeping before we wrap up this episode. Um, so we're taking a break next week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the 4th of November, we're going to have Kiki's Cosplay Service. Um, should we extend the deadline a little bit since we're having a week off? Yeah, we can do that. Okay, so um, um, it'll be the 30th or something. 30, 31st. Yeah, Halloween. Halloween. Get you, get you. So, yeah. You have until Halloween. <laughs> uh, she's a great Max cosplayer. Um, she puts a lot of a lot of attention to detail in it. Um, so, make sure to get questions in for her. Mm-hmm. And then, on the 11th of November, we have Brianna DeVries. The voice of Chloe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, we're not going to accept questions until... Um, let's say... 24th. Okay, so yeah, this Tuesday is when you can start getting questions in for Rihanna. Yeah. Um, and then we have the extra live stream on the 25th. We're gonna take um a little break on the 18th again. Mm-hmm. Just to get get prepared. Um, Zach is getting married. Man, mm-hmm. it's a big week. <laughs> Crazy. You sound you sound so enthusiastic yeah. about it. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. It's hard. It's hard. I'm very sick. If 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 the listeners haven't noticed, well, I'm not very sick. I'm I'm coming off the sickness. I'm okay now. Wow. Uh, oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so we have the, the actual stream. We have that on the twenty fifth. I'm sorry. Twenty fifth. Yeah. Uh, do we want to go ahead? I mean, I know people are probably expecting it because of, like, one of the last little things that we said when Katie was here, but do we want to go ahead and confirm that Katie's going to be with us? <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe? Maybe. We'll put it, yeah. we'll, maybe we'll, we'll see. We'll put, leave extra life announcement to, um, closer to the date. Close to, okay. So we'll, uh, Keep everybody posted with that. Um, should we say what we're doing extra life for this year? Yeah, uh, so we've chosen Children's Hospital in Puerto Rico because mm-hmm. um, they got so hit so badly by um, by the hurricane. So they definitely like we thought that would be the best the best one to do it for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year um, we raised thirty two ninety two. Yep. And so let's beat that this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna have some cool prizes. Um, gonna, it's gonna be a little bit of a fun time for me and Joey though. Um, yeah. Because we're gonna be hanging out in the same room for that stream. It's gonna be fun. Um, I mean, I'm 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 really excited for this stream. It's meeting Joey has been like a long time coming, so I'm just really excited for it. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. cool. That, um, concluding about the extra live stream, we'll talk about the Patreon page. Thank you ev- to everyone who supports us on Patreon for helping the show happen um, by covering all costs of our subscription. All the money after the subscription cost will be donated to the Trevor Project, I believe. Is that still yep. happening? Yep. Okay. Um, and with that said, we will see everybody on the 4th with Kiki's Cosplay Service. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Later, guys. Thanks.